to see if that's here. Not know what the change is. It only right. means that someone did some actions. And what are the actions right. we asked it to log? Someone accessed it or right. its metadata. Somebody read it, wrote it, or executed it. So we can't tell what was changed in it, but we can tell that somebody wrote a change. All right. So that's some cool stuff. I want to return to that warning message that we got earlier about my style of rule. It said, when I put this rule in, it said, hey, old, old formatted rules slow things down. Right. Implies that there's a new format of rules. So why don't I delete this one? Tash capital D just drops all the rules out of audit D. And I'm going to add back the same rule, but using the new format. All right. So we can still use the old format if you already do auditing and don't want to change your configs. You can still do it. But the new format looks different. We are going to put in an audit rule that will always and upon exit look at things. This is for architecture base 64 systems. The path I'm interested in watching is Etsy, SSH, SSHD config. Just like before, I'm interested in writes, accesses, reads, or executions. And I'm going to put in my key so that when I query the audit log, I can pull out things that match this. Notice I didn't get the warning about old formatted rules. The and that's not that much harder. It's just a couple more command line arguments, really right? Than the right. old style. I'll also say that if you look in the audit CTL man page, in their examples, they actually have both the old format rule and the new format rule. Yeah. This change is newish. For that reason, we're including documentation on doing it either way. If you're looking at older content on the internet, you may get old style rules in that warning message. Right. All right. The other thing I want to show you is there's a change to what the listing looks like as well. That's a bit longer. So remember when I put in the rule, I said that I was interested in watching this file and that mm -hmm. there's metadata properties that we track. Well, now all those metadata things are explicitly listed in this rule. So even though I didn't specify them on my command line, we got them all. When something opens the file, binds the file, when something execs the file, when something set X adders the file, when something, what, make dir attribute of the file, right? So these are all the things that if somebody does this to the file, we're going to write an audit log about it. This was happening before. It just wasn't explicitly stated in our rule. So it also suggests that you could filter those. If there were things you didn't care about, you could drop them, but then you'd have to specify all the things you did care about. Right. Um, and it will, things like disestig don't tell, well, they do tell you what you're interested in capturing, but it's a lot like this. Nobody ever complains if you capture more. Although yeah, that's true. That's true. If there was one in there that was really chatty that you didn't really care about, you could always drop. That's my point. Yeah. This is now logging a ton of stuff that happens to this one file. And we have put more logging rules into place that logs a ton of different things that happen on the machine. We're generating a lot of data. So that's where it becomes important. How much file system space are you using? What are your log rotate rules for keeping backlogs and rotating through them and fixing how much space they're using? This may also be important for remote logging. Right? It's great that you're doing all this auditing, but if the system gets compromised, that data is also compromised. But if you have it moved remotely, then there's a pristine copy that you know somebody didn't mess around with. Vincent actually asks a very related question. Is the audit log file log rotated? Ah, good question. We would have to look. Let's see, shall we? Logrotate.conf. Generally, oh, it doesn't specify the directory. How about, uh, let's see, logrotate.d. And let's look at our syslog. These are all the log rotate rules for the different logs that we keep on the system. And the syslog log rotator does not reference var log audit, right? But it does the cron, mail log, messages, secure, spooler. Looking at one of my existing systems, it does look like it's being rotated somehow. I have three or four rotations of it. 
on this system that's been around for like a year and a half. So something's rotating it. <laughs> Actually, let's see if that is included in the audit RPM. Let's just look at less. And I wonder if Audit D is actually doing it natively. Axel in the chat. Rick thinks that it might be in the Audit D rules, and that could be true. Now, I don't have an extensive setup with Audit D on this particular system. Just whatever came out of the box. Rick says it's in the auditd.conf file. Helps you spell it right. Which sort of makes sense, because this file is special, because it isn't just text. And I don't know how Log Rotate deals with things that are not just text. It doesn't care. Yeah. Yeah, it just does things. And somewhere down in here is probably another description. Well, at any rate, it's rotated. And we think it's rotated by the audit daemon itself. Right. <laughs> the numlogs five makes me feel like that's it because I have five. I have four rotations plus the live log. Yeah. And you can see here there's the max log. Oh, there it is. Max log file. Bam. Right there. You there. Go. And then Eight. it triggers this Eight rotation. somethings. Probably make. Cool. So my last thing is earlier, we talked about the sample rules. So I'm going to audit CTL dash D again to delete all of my rules. And then I'm going to add all the rules from that stig sample file. And so it just reads them in. And if I do my list now, man, that was a lot further back in history than I was thinking it was. Control R, man. These are all of the rules that got added by importing that file. And Look at that. Fairly large set of them. So you don't have to write your own from scratch every time. We've got this like pile that'll be handy, especially if you're doing disastig. Maybe you showed this while I was busy looking up the file size, but what do those files look like? Are they easy to write yourself or are they just line by line, the same thing you put on the command line? They are pretty much the same as what's in this file, except there's comments. All right. So there's a whole bunch of comments. Here's what's actually in here. So essentially it's the same thing I was using the audit control command to do, except without the prefix audit CTL. Reminds Every me of an old school IP tables config. Yes, it is very much <laughs> And then notice that we also get a whole bunch of keys, right? So we were adding those with dash K and like SSHD underscore config. So I could do yeah. an AU search dash K identity. And that would yeah. pull out all of the things that match these key identity rules or time change rules that I have highlighted here or system locale rules, right? So you can look at the things that are common to a subsystem based off of their key. Cool. There you go. All you ever wanted to know about Audit D. Well, I don't know if I'd go that far to know about Audit Yeah. <laughs> like, what do all those commands mean that we put in there? That'd be a lot to cover. <laughs> all right. So that kind of runs us off the, what we're expecting to cover today on Into the Terminal. Vincent chimed up. He says, eight gigs for a var log audit partition seems a little exaggerated. It depends on how many backlogs you want to keep. Depends on the rotation policy you care about. How long do you want to keep them? How much traffic is on your system? How many little things get written? With all those rules you put in place, those audit logs go back to January. I don't have any extra rules on there. They're basically like whatever comes out of the box with a stock rail system. I didn't add any of those additional STIG things. If you're doing STIG, look at all the extra log data that's going to end up in there. My relatively low volume system, Five rotations only gets you back to January. Is that going to be enough for you? <laughs> right. That's the question. You may tweak some of the log rotations so that you end up using more space between rotations. You might keep more. So maybe it's not eight rotations. Maybe it's 20 or 30. The other thing, and Nate, you pointed this out earlier. When we were looking at the audit logs, we saw that a thing had happened, right? Vim wrote this file. Right. Or some process accessed the file. But we didn't get details on what 
had occurred, just that this right. event had occurred. And so I think auditing tied in with session recording. Yes. Actually kind of like a better, a better long-term solution because session recording will show you what was happening during the shell session when that occurred, but realize that not everything is session recorded, like daemons doing things, not terminal sessions, so not session recorded, but it would get you more information on what your users are doing or what your administrators are doing on the system at, at different times. Right. But we covered session recording in another episode. I think we've covered it a couple of times and we have a lab. You can go do the lab, try it yourself. Yeah.